I want to talk about the future of food. How do we feed 8 billion hungry mouths across the planet in a sustainable way? Making enough food for everyone to ensure that we eradicate starvation, to make enough healthy food so that we can prevent and offset chronic illness, and to do it in a sustainable way so that we are mindful of the planet that we live in with its finite resources. Here in the Bay Area of San Francisco, there are two aspects to this on display, right at the same place. So here I am, this is Saturday morning, there is a bustling market, food market. It's amazing, there is countless fresh, organic fruit and veg, as much as you could possibly want. None of it is cheap, it's all absolutely delicious, extremely healthy. It's also not sustainable. It's fine for the people here in San Francisco. In fact, it's fine for the tech bros from San Francisco working down in Silicon Valley. And one of the things that they and others are working on is the future of meat in particular. Not by um, organic farming, but actually by lab cultivated meat, where you take animal cells and then in huge vats you produce vast quantities of them and you can then make them into meat-based products using lattice-based structures so that you have a texture and a taste of meat that is amenable to the population. So there's one technological solution that is in its infancy, which I think will help a bit when we come to the planet's insatiable desire for meat. I mean, Last year, there was something like 1.1 billion chickens eaten across the UK, a population of less than 70 million people. The numbers are just staggering, and the ways in which these chickens are reared is, I think, just frankly, completely inexcusable to a technologically advanced society with other solutions at hand. But we have to tackle the inertia here, we have to tackle the economics, we have to think about how we take on the food industry. The rise and rise and overconsumption of ultra-processed foods is one clear example of this, where we are seeing time and time again examples of the harm that they do, from the increase in cardiometabolic disease to neurodegenerative disease to cancer and inflammatory disease. And of course, the classic example that we have there is the increased risk of Crohn's disease susceptibility in excess ultra-processed food consumption. Just one part of a complex jigsaw in this inflammatory bowel disease. Can we make healthier ultra-processed foods? Well, that might be one way of doing it. Not all dietary emulsifiers, for example, have the same deleterious effect on the human microbiota <laughs> via which they modulate the impact on the mucosal immune system, causing increased gut permeability, an altered microbial invasion into the mucosal immune system and then promoting chronic inflammatory diseases. So there are just a few thoughts on the future of, of food. We need to feed the planet sustainably. We need to try and think about whether or not we can produce newer foods like lab cultivated meat that may be scalable and sustainable and may in the future be modifiable to produce healthier variants that can truly prevent chronic illness. Maybe the same with ultra-processed foods as well. But in the meantime, for those that are lucky enough and privileged enough to be able to afford to do so, healthy organic fruit and vegetables, grass-fed organic meats, for example, all cooked from fresh in some kind of Mediterranean style associated with reduced stress, sunlight exposure, exercise and much more is really the cornerstone for healthy living. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Goodbye.